haven't done the data yet. I don't have, I haven't had the time to do the legwork. So I want to bring somebody in and then well, I think lay out a go. That's awful. You know, so that's why we decided to bring Dave in. Then he, then somebody who's done it before, it's just a seasonal position and it gives us time for me to get the data together that the board wanted to, to look at it. But I just, I just think that bringing Dave in without any wing experience, he has plow experience, but he doesn't, he's never run a wing on a plow, which is totally different than whatever he might have learned over the summer. Uh, I just think it's a, a risky move to give him a $210,000 brand new truck to run a brand new route. <laughs> well, I can't discuss somebody's, I'm not, you know, the pulp, what I would know about him or not as far as his abilities, you know, I mean, my understanding is uh, on his experience level, I'm not really sure now is the time to hash that out um, in a public session. But um, certainly um, that was the reason that, you know, because I don't know what the board's going to do. So I have to do something. And at this point, I can't, you know, our, our options are, we're very limited as far as bringing someone in in a seasonal position. Has anybody been offered that has supplied a seasonal position or just Dave? Just Dave. Oh. Because what? my understanding is they both, the applicants were looking for full-time work. I, I spoke with both of the applicants about the process and about what was happening. So, um, but, you know, I think, you know, speaking as one of the five members, I mean, I, I, I would like to see a fully functional uh, highway department uh, made up of good, reliable, uh, local talent. Um, now, I will say that just because you put your application in doesn't mean that you're going to get an interview or get hired. Um, so I think, you know, on that end of things, it's, I don't know who's in the candidate, but uh, I know Dave, I know the big scramble right now is to, you know, winter's going to be here in a month, right, or less. Um, I would just, you know, definitely on Dave's end of things is, you know, you, you know just as well as, you know, him coming in, you know, Jason, you know, you were the, you know, a few years ago, you were the entry level of plow, you yeah. know. So, yeah, you know, coach him, mentor him, get him up to speed. Um, hopefully, you know, between candidates and, yeah. and you know, we'll be able to put that back together maybe at some yeah. point this winter or maybe after the winter we get a fully functional for the spring. Yeah. Um, we don't know right I know we will have to make some decisions because we're going to be going through budgeting here in the next, uh, you know, over the next two to three months we'll be doing our budget. So, um, no, but I think at this point we'll probably be looking to fully fund, fully fund the department. Now if something falls through and we have to outsource some pieces, then we'll have to do that. But, mm -hmm. so. Um, and as far as the routes, that's the road foreman decides. The select board does not decide who gets what route, nor do I. That's, just, that's the road foreman's decision. I wasn't talking about any uh, routes. I was just talking about what I've heard. Yeah. So and that's what I said to, to Alan, you know, when I talked to him the other day, and uh, was the same. So that's why um, we just, you know, the select board I, uh, came up maybe two or three meetings ago or something like that, and all of a sudden, you know, I, I wasn't thinking about outsourcing anything more, but I know the, the biggest challenge. I do. The biggest challenge that I see every day, and what I do, is trying to find a good creator and operator is very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it takes decades to groom a good grader operator. Yeah. Um, you know, that's why that, I got slack is and that, doing right now. You know, and, and that's, you know, it's tough to lose somebody that has greater experience. And, uh, you know, it's no different than anything you do. If it's plow or wing or whatever, it takes time to build that skill and, and learn that, so. Um, yeah, right now, Gary Slack is doing a couple, he's gonna get through, I guess, he's gonna try to get through all the roads that Alan told me before before winter so. so I know for the past two and a half years I put in that I wanted to learn a grader and I've actually worked with AJ and I've worked with Doug and I've taken a grader class and I've never been approached about trying on a woodland road or a back road never been approached about doing any of that so I was just curious that's interesting yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, that's definitely that's something you know, between you and Alan and Therese to talk about I mean definitely you and Alan first and yeah then, yeah, go to trees. And Alan uh, uh, yeah. said that he's taking classes on grader as well. <coughs> yeah. I'm wondering why he's not trying it. Okay. Anything else? 
Any other public comment? Inquiry? I have one, just because I want to put another business. But uh, Elliot is here. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so, one, awesome. Like, seeing a lot of usage at the skateboard park. Right. Um, right. Thank uh, you very much. My daughters and I kind of walked over um, this weekend to kind of see it, like, firsthand. You know, firsthand with people on it, uh, mm -hmm. which was really cool. Um, the one takeaway I did notice that was over there, and I don't know how we approached that, either with some signage or some outreach on it, is um, the lack of helmet usage. Um, well, D2 does yeah. have a sign. Yeah, well, I'm just saying the people that were there this weekend, yeah. and these were adults, actually one picture went in the paper that showed people clearly not, you know, wearing helmets. I know no, we're working no, on a sign. It's on the sign. We yeah. are working on a sign. Yeah. We are. Yeah. We are, and it's a real extensive sign that's being um, done and ordered. Or, yeah. 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 She's right. Yeah. And it and says, it's recommended, I think. Yeah. Yeah. From what I saw yeah. over there was yeah. you know, younger individuals were wearing their helmets. Yeah. But the older, well, say 18 and over, individuals were not wearing helmets. So. Yeah. And, and, and even though we sort of kind of have a responsibility there, mm -hmm. you know, I can ask how do we get you, that out there? I'll have Dietrich put you. up once they've already decided the wording, I think, on right. the sign right. page. So right. I'll just have her put it up. She can just laminate yeah. that on yeah. paper. I'll talk right. to Dietrich about yeah, that. Other than that, it was really great. That right. was the first thing I take away was like, ooh, how much and, and, and thank you because. We, the raffle drawing, 878 bucks. Thanks. But yeah, as far as usage, it was good. I mean, of course, it was yeah. 77 yeah. degrees yeah. that day, and mm -hmm. everybody was out there. But yeah, yeah, yeah we'll just. Really cool to see. Yeah. Right, but we have been working on ideas for the sign through the summer, and then it takes a while to um, get that ordered and work. Yeah. Oh, I had. Uh, all right, let's see. So we had some appointments. She got through. And what's that? Oh, appointments. I'm sorry. I'm thinking. Oh. No. Appointments, like. No. So now, we have, now we have. Now we. Now we have, which is good. Yeah. Now we have some committee appointments. So we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, five yeah. different appointments for different committees here. Um, and then like we typically we ask for uh, some yeah. sort of letter or document of note of, um, of um, interest. interest to do it. Yeah. So we had uh, three individuals for uh, four because it was Steve Fry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So we had four individuals that had put a letter in regards to the um, equity and inclusion committee. Did see one. Were you gonna? <laughs> Lenny, gonna do it? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> um, so we, we had names and the letters. Yeah, they're all in packet. We had four individuals on there. If we just get a motion on that. So it's Jesse Plotsky, David Fair, Owen Daniel McCarter, and Christy Fry. And we move to appoint all four of them to the equity. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Okay. Let's get rid of some of my papers here. What is that? Um, um, you see on the planning commission too. No, I find a place for you if you're cold <laughs> now. Oh, that's <laughs> just trying to figure out if it's planning commission. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm like, okay, we <laughs> um, We also had a uh, Interest um, for Wayne Townsend for the Planning Commission. There was a letter in there for that. So if I have motion on that one. So move. Second. Okay, all in favor? So what does that put the Planning Commission at now? Officially three? Yeah, including me. Yeah. <laughs> so get there. Two so far. Two. Really hoping for three. Your, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we made, I did email with um, uh, the chair of the planning commission right now. He's going to obviously send us a letter of resignation because he's moving. So. All right. And Ellie had a new one. May, may, I, 
talk on forum, um, um, approve or disapprove or whatever. Can I make a statement? Sure. My understanding of the process of a citizen joining a town committee is a person who wants to join a committee is introduced to the committee, the person is given information about the committee, the person learns the functions and goals of the committee, the committee members get to be introduced to the person, the person is invited to a meeting, the person attends a meeting in person or by Zoom. Through the years, committee members have come and gone. Every time that process has been in place. That is how Peter Finney, Shane Kinsley, Fashion Hinman, Melissa Hayward, and Caleb Carwood came to be committee members. However, I am confused upon seeing this name on the agenda as an addition to the Recreation Committee. As chairperson of the Recreation Committee, I am wondering why this procedure was not followed. I was not notified about this. Why wasn't I introduced to this afternoon? As chairperson, I should have been given contact information so I could have talked to this person and invited her to a committee meeting and answered any questions she may have. I do not understand why this applicant is being considered to the Recreation Committee without going through the established procedure. Has the procedure changed? Finding out about this appointment because it is an agenda item puts me in a very awkward position. As a courtesy, shouldn't I have been notified? Well, I can say that um, since I've been at Bethel, I was never aware of the procedure that you outlined. And we have been looking for volunteers, as you know, aggressively, as have you. And so we put out the letter, we put out all the posts looking for volunteers. The only thing I was told was that they were supposed to submit a letter of interest to the select board. We have asked anyone who has, and I've said this publicly, I don't know how many times, um, that if you're interested in to coming to or joining a committee, I have asked people to go to the meetings so that they could get a feel for it. I know um, that there's current member, at least one member of the Recreation Committee who knows the applicant and, and said she'd be good on it, but I haven't, um, like this, so I'm not aware of that procedure at all. All I have been told is that they need to send a letter of interest to the select board. It's obviously the select board's right to appoint whomever they choose. And so she put in a letter of interest and said she wanted to join the rec committee. And I don't know, I didn't know she hadn't attended the meeting. Um, so I put it on the agenda for the select board to appoint her. So. Okay, but as you said, in your September 14th, you recommended um, any person who has yeah. interest to come to a meeting. Right. Now, as you mentioned, this person that his name is on here yep. knows a committee member. Yeah. Okay. As far as I know, um, if you're suggesting that that committee is the pool director, <laughs> that pool director, um, I would think that that pool director knows the procedure. Also, that pool director, um, in February, emailed me that she had family commitments and had to take. It wasn't the pool director. Okay, so let, let's not. So I, I think so. so my opinion, anyways. Well, I don't think there is any formal. Uh -huh. There is no formal documented procedures for the okay. committees on how how people are uh, brought forward. Um, okay. to serve on the committee. I know in the past, the only thing that the select board has required is that because there were times where people were nominated for a position and then didn't even know about it and got themselves on a committee or another role of government yeah. and then, you know, didn't show up. So the biggest thing that we have asked for here in the last few years anyways is we want to have some sort of formal communications from that person expressing interest. Now, I, my opinion, 
is, well, I mean, we have a couple of different appointments tonight. So, you know, the um, Equity Inclusion Committee hasn't really met yet, so they don't have any people. So, um, so that piece of it, because it's a newly formed committee, literally, we, anybody that wants to be on that committee that puts a letter forth is, you know, being signed up for that committee. Mm -hmm. uh, now, committees that are already are established, like the Planning Commission, the Planning Commission. Yeah, where the plan, planning commission um, ended things. Of course, they only have one or two people on that, so it's easier for them to recruit, let's say. Yeah. Uh, I would say that, you know, I would expect that that the appointments, at least the committee would know about whoever the appointments are that are coming. Yeah, well, how do we, I don't know. Uh, I, mean, I, I don't know anything about this person. So. Um, I, it seems like it's a rush job, and somebody should have just um, so I, this person, I don't, I, don't I, would, know. I mean, my opinion would be, why don't we hold off on this individual? Why don't you schedule a time with your committee to invite that person in um, to take part of the committee? Or, um, well, I mean, we can't just have people just throw names in, you know. I mean, I can all of a sudden say, hey, I know somebody that would be great on the but you sent you a letter of interest. That was your requirement. That's what they've done. You have a, a person here who's, who's who's interested in serving on a committee that we have been begging people for years, people to get on committees. And now, you know, I mean, I don't know whether she's attended or not. I've encouraged everyone to do that, as is Kelly. So I feel like here is a, obviously a resident of town who we have been, you know, you know, asking and asking. Well, asking I think on this point. Just well, well I guess my, my, my point is not that sh this person shouldn't be allowed on the committee. My right. point is the informal system that we do have, at least the name is generated from the committee, and the committee knows who the person like, right. like, if this person comes to your meeting, it's not like Ellie can't, Ellie can't say, well, we're not going to have that person on right. the committee, because right. that's not right. right. And mm -hmm. that person has just as much rights to the committee as right. you do. Yes. However, I can see her point where somebody she doesn't even know is coming on to be on the committee without anybody knowing about it. How do I know the so, skills? What's her um, interest in? What? But I'm just one of the fifth, right? Right. So. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, yeah. And I don't have any of that information. I don't have any contact information. I guess, I guess my, what I would like to see anyways is that the name will so I guess we'll go this way. So right now we have we have asked the community for helpers, right? Yes. So a majority of that information comes back to the town office and probably doesn't go to the committee first, right? right. right. So I'm guessing maybe what would be best going forward is that the information if it comes to Kelly or somebody, Kelly, yeah. you know, to then send that name to the chairperson or the committee to say, hey, just want to let you know this person here uh, is interested in uh, and what that, do you think and you say yes we would and that is what happens that. with melissa harwood and Kelly. Yeah. when melissa harwood uh, uh, expressed interest kelly hill sends me the name and information for melissa harwood yeah. and then i contacted melissa met with melissa and Kayla. and and so that that has been done in the past and that was what was done yeah with our newest was when Melissa Harwood expressed interest, Kelly sent me the information, I contacted, I met with them, and then they, they came to, they um, attended the Zoom meeting, start doing, I got to know them, the committee got to know them, I introduced them to the rest of the committee, and then they put in their letter of interest. I, I have no, I didn't know Kelly had Sent this on. That's but, fine. But in the spirit of this, anyway, okay. is this person here clearly has an interest because yes, they've stated yes. that. And we're glad. Um, it's not like it's not like um, somebody had recommended someone's name and that person didn't even have a letter in here. Right. Type deal. Right. Um, so at this point, if this person goes to your committee meeting, yeah, or not, I mean, it's not like it's not like you are going to be able to say no to the person, right? Right. So. I mean, in the spirit, I mean, I think at this point, it's probably best to go forward with the approving the person to the committee. If you read the letter, yeah, I mean, um, her. but I, I, can you read the letter to me? I can have to tell you 
No, but what I'm saying right now, Ellie, is if this person goes to your committee, whatever, yeah. when you meet next, right. I mean, it doesn't matter at this point, right? Because they're going to go, right. it's not like no, you're going there and say, no, we're not going to let you join, right? Exactly. So at this point. Well, but I think, I think well, part, of Ellie's, part of Ellie's point is not, not just that Ellie and the committee getting to meet them, but having having the person go to an initial meeting, there, there's sort of a mutual agreement of, yes, this is going to work. Because that person yeah. could also, like, I happen to know her, and she's, she's great, you'll love her. She's really, she's just fantastic. She'll add a lot to your committee. But right. what if, you know, what if she just happened to be somebody who thought, oh, this is a good idea on Thursday, and then by Friday has decided yeah. it's not going to be the point of it. You know, so I can, I can see there's sort of this mutual agreement of, we both come up to this meeting, we agree this, you know, this is a good fit, let's move forward and have you appointed the yeah. yeah, maybe she, did she find that she didn't know what to do. Well, I know we've, I maybe, maybe we ought to make a formal system. I know why they're in. I think Lisa's recorded enough from over the time, and I think, I think a majority of the people that have come through here in the past, someone from that committee that night usually is in attendance, and they say that they would like to add so-and-so right. right. to the committee. And then we usually ask, did we get a letter of, you know, interest? And then we say yes, or in some cases we say we didn't get one, so we need one before we can make that motion. Mm -hmm. So I mean, should we so going forward? Should we have some sort of more? You want to mandate that they go to a meeting instead of suggest that they attend the meeting first. You want to make sure that they definitely have attended the meeting. So if this could change after we've done this, like I need to make sure. Well, I'm that just give it to me that they at least interacted with the chair or the committee members. You know, maybe it's not attend a attend a full meeting, but it, you know. So like, like what Ellie was saying about the the previous person, right? They reached out to Kelly. Kelly forwards it to right the chair, whoever that is, and then it goes from there. And the chair says, yeah, let's let's put you into the select board meeting and that's or you know, agenda and do the process from there. So not necessarily forcing the <coughs> meetings. If it's a group that only meets once a month, yeah. then you're waiting two full months or Well, and that's the long. case. Yeah, yeah, well, that's the case with most, and, right? Because every committee except for you guys meets, and when Kelly Ford, meets once a month. And when Kelly Ford, the, the, the name Melissa Harwood to me, mm -hmm. I arranged to meet with her. I met with them, Melissa and Caleb, at the gazebo at the end of June. And we talked about what the committee does, what we've done in the past, what are goals, what are whatever we met. Yeah, and they had an, an idea of whether they really wanted to be on the committee or not. Well, she might not want to be now. Oh, I, but, but, oh my God. I think that we should have a little more, of a, not necessarily formally written in blood um, structure. Some sort of something. But I think that just in the spirit of making sure that committee members are, I don't want to say compatible, but yeah. have full disclosure of what the committee is about and, and, and what their involvement is, I think it's a better step to do that first. Um, before, I mean, we can appoint somebody and they can resign tomorrow. Right. I mean, it can, it right. can happen. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but I think to go through the process, we can appoint the person. But in the future, have a little more of a you know a, a way in for them to yeah. I'll have Kelly draft up the process yeah. and give it to you guys. We'll figure out. Wait, hey, hey, we still on the or something? This is all new. <laughs> you on the last or second to last? Either way. <laughs> uh, why don't we have it that uh, the committee has got to recommend who is going to be on the on, on the board? So that way, they've already gone to the meeting, and, and somebody from the committee should be able to recommend mm -hmm. whoever goes on to us. Does that sound reasonable? Whatever you want. I just need to know what you want, Karen. <laughs> I think it would be great if you want to uh, have a, I don't know, call it a scope of what your committee does, or a, yeah. a vision, or a Yeah, we need to have it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I did. available to the yes, person. Yes, that's Not necessarily meet, I'm not saying this person has to meet you. No, but, but we I mean, This know. person may need to see something in writing. Yeah. I'm interested in maybe, you have a big one? Yeah, okay. Yeah. They put a letter of intent. That's good enough for me. Yeah, we did the, we we did the, the mailing. We made the point. Exactly. Mm -hmm.
what? When I great when we made did the letter that we stuffed in all the tax that got stuffed in all, I, I didn't the tax bills. So when they got stuffed in the tax bills, it did say because we had this conversation on Teen Time, we did do a little blurb about every committee that we were you know that we're looking for people for that had come from you know the town. We had about years of trying to get people. Exactly. Adding more requirements, you're going to reduce the number of people that are interested because you're going to say, I mean, I'm sorry. A lot of, especially, God forbid you're saying it, but the old time monitor, you go, hey, I'm willing to volunteer, don't jack me up. Yeah. yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. Also, I, I would like to add to that, if they're not willing to talk to the committee leader, then they probably sh should think about, you know, maybe what kind of commitment are you actually going to get out of them? I mean, that's, I mean, that's what I would say. And this isn't that nobody would just to clarify, because Jason brings up a good point. This isn't to clarify this person didn't want to meet with anyone. This person wasn't told they had to. Right. Because right. we just suggest right. that everybody go and then we put in a letter and just because we've been so desperate for volunteers. So there certainly can create a process moving forward, and I'm happy to, to do that. Um, it just wasn't the case. I, that was just not, we didn't well, just, that until And I see time. both sides of it because you have, you know, the one part of that, you know, Really, if, if you are an able-bodied individual in the town of Buffalo and you want to be on a committee, then you have the right to be on a committee. Okay. I mean, I couldn't see if the committee already has 12 people and we're already saying, well, we've got too many people, maybe that person may want to look for a different committee type deal. Right. But I, I do see the end where, you know, at least the committee should know that there is an individual that's interested in their committee. Rather than, this, because, because the way the select board is, you know, these committees are doing work of the select board, and we're not really dictating to them what they're doing. So in a way, if we kind of skip that process, we start just, you know, letting people go to the committee, then you're going to feel like we're stepping on you, which is not the point of the committee, right. you know what I mean? Yeah. But well, so you're the saying point's well taken where you know, there are some people that will say, hey, I'm going to volunteer, but I want to go through all this, yeah, all so all this stuff, and you're going to lose me. puts in a letter of interest that we pass that along to the committee chair just so they know they have a heads right. up to know. Does, does yeah. that work better? Yeah, that's the guy that you know. There's a copy of the letter of public inquiry and I'm the yeah. floor. I mean, this thing was a big surprise. Yeah. It just was a big surprise. So why don't, we, why don't we go in for it if we get somebody that, that is interested, especially with a letter, that, that one copy goes to whoever the committee head is and the other copy and then you'll know that hey we're yeah. put this person on the agenda. So are you saying so so now you guys have two different things. You're either either moving forward and you want the committee to nominate the person to the board, or do you just want the committee to be notified that you're appointing someone? So so you've said two different things here. So I think it's a great answer. The flaw and this is, you know, my hope yeah. is this wouldn't happen, but the flaw with the idea of the committee only, only the committee can put forth people to the select board. The issue there is, let's say Ellie stacks the rec committee with all of her cronies, and yeah, yeah. Mo's super into basketball, but Ellie and her crew aren't, right. and they keep Mo off the off the team because he's into basketball. Exactly. And, like, they could yeah, they flash back to Mo. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's that right. 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 No, but I think, I would think in this case, if, if we get the appointee, at least right. that committee is. I mean, I think. Yeah, you this is actually it's actually good. It's exclusively their right to say if somebody right. gets right. committed because it's actually not theirs. It's, it's, it's the select board, board, which is what Dave said. Right. He's right. It's the select right. board. And, and I think it's actually good that we're having this conversation mm -hmm. because of putting yeah. people on because it's better than having a conversation that we can't get anything, right? Yeah, right. So, I don't know. You know, we're going to run on the yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, when the Yeah. A lot of they think it's a stuff. The conversation committee was standing up this last time. Mary Floyd asked, do you want to be on it? I said, sure, I will. She said, well, send a letter in. I said, everybody knows me. I'm not sending a letter in. And Mary Floyd needs to get on the board. Hmm. So it is good if we have the same process. That's Dave's point right there. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sure she would have a letter. I do. <laughs> I, believe, I believe that it is the select board's, it is within the select board's purview to drive what any committee because you can delegate at any time any topic that you want to a committee. And in fact, you have done that for the Recreation Committee. At one point in the past, you said you need to take a plan, a master plan, and work on it. And um, so 
I agree. I think that Lindley makes a really good point. And, and obviously, I completely agree with Dave that we don't want to make this, you know, hoops of fire. I think as long as the chair of the committee is notified that, and they get the same letter to the select board, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. And we get a letter of interest. Yeah, when you get a letter of interest, the committee gets it. But we don't wait on approval from the committee because people, like, I don't want to be waiting on planning commission people, for example, and the select board chooses who points to push your agenda, not the agenda of the committees. So I agree with, with Dave and Lindley Mo on this, that you, you notify them and the person shows up and they don't like it or they're not going to be a good fit, then they say, they can write a letter of resignation and then we say, but try this committee because this might be a better fit for you. But we are suggesting that everybody goes to a meeting first to just see where they're going to fit. Just ask Lenny, I'm preaching that to Mom. Try this one. If you're not there, we want you here. You know, so. Now he's torn between three committees. Yeah, that's right. Now Lenny's like a select board, a planning commission. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so do, we, um, do we have a motion to approve? This individual for the recreation committee, and I guess going forward, we're going to so make sure that all parties are involved. In yeah. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. And um, may I have um, contact information? Sure, I'll have Kelly send you the letter. Okay. Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, I'm sure Kelly would be sorry that she hadn't forwarded it to you. Okay. I'm sure it was oversight. Thank, thank you. I, I thank you for not. For, for, for change, uh, for talking about this, so I won't be surprised and shocked. <laughs> Thank you. Um, liquor license rule. Move to approve. Second. Start those years. I know it's going to. Okay, all in favor? All right. All right. Yeah. 
Um, slim, so, slim but again, that's just, it was just one of the options that you talked about, yeah. and so I just received the information. So I wanted you to see mm -hmm. that was the state. Well, the only thing I was thinking of is like, you know, currently, even though they're not contracting to us, they do spend time in the town. Absolutely, so yeah. I don't, it's to hard three. to quantify what they are actually doing for us now, if that's yeah. six and hours a week or 10 hours a week. I don't see them sitting. Well, they're across, across the first couple of days, so they're not on work time. There you go. <laughs> and the thing, too, is that they're, um, obviously, this is full service. Right. This isn't just what they do now, you know. That include they, animal service and all that? Yes. Yeah. Uh, service contract. But yeah, they, <laughs> they get on to the uh, Class C roads and, and check speeding up in there? Yeah, they do everything. Yep, they do full on. Con if you hire them, if we're hiring them to do a contract with them. Okay, because I was curious about that one. Yeah. It was going to be like we were full of just service downtown. And yeah, not, um, no, no, they do. The only thing I just like. She should be there full service. Well, the only thing well, it's like. That's what the Oscar's doing right now. Uh, so. uh, but the only thing I just wonder is like, you know, they would bill us for 11 hours, right? Of work, where right now, let's say they're probably doing three or four a week mm -hmm. for free. Well, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Obviously, they so drive they're... through here. I wouldn't know. I could ask her about that. Okay. So, okay. so okay. Yeah. in the limit, there was limit for the limit. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, they, they sit out by the fire department, mm -hmm. but that's state by the way. Yeah, they, well, they sit on each side of the town. Yeah, but do they? I, I, they don't do the village. They have the authority. Well, I won't say they don't do it because I did yeah. see one pull over yeah. uh, at the top of Pleasant Street there last week. Yeah. Yeah, two people. But yes, I, I mean, I yes. assume they, they certainly can pull somebody over in the village anytime they want. Jason? I noticed that uh, Randolph has the sheriff's department doing their tail, and I didn't know maybe they have a better deal. Yeah. Yeah, we've been looking at uh, different options of, um, well, one, that they're having another constable to pick up the constable that was not being used now. Another one is um, because our constable has, is working full-time over in Royalton, uh, either Royalton coming in doing some patrolling here, and then the other thing we had booked was Vermont State Police, what they could offer, um, and, and the county sheriff's kind of similar yeah. to like Orange County is doing mail in the county here type deal. So yeah, we're so, just getting prices with the contract. Yeah, just trying to figure out which direction to go. And, but as you can see, it's very expensive for the Vermont State Police. And, yeah. I and right now we're getting uh, some sort of benefit for, you know. I noticed I had a uh, car good. pulled over in his world and cruiser. Yeah. <laughs> so. In Bethel. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. My uh, name is David Griffin. I used to be constable here in Bethel for seven years. And when I was constable, the state police told me if you drop the speed limit down below 30 miles an hour, they will not issue a ticket. Because the federal, because the state judges consider 30 miles an hour as a safe speed limit, and they will not uh, honor any speed limit under under 30. Miles an hour. Hmm. I've never heard that. I've never asked for it. Oh, that's interesting. I've never heard so, that. So, and then state police, well, back when I was a principal, would not touch an animal. Mm -hmm. If an animal is hit by a car, other than a deer, I mean, a domestic animal is hit by a car, they have to call a principal to come and dispose of it. Right. Yeah, that's true. So this would be in lieu of having a constable, the DSP would take over the contract, in which case they would do animal control, like dogs. You wouldn't want to ask them if they would. No, she's not going to say they would. I asked. Oh, that was my, because I was like, why do I have animal control officer? I, I was asked the same thing, they by one group. So, um, but as far as the 25 miles an hour, I don't know, I've never heard that because obviously it takes, um, if the town has used a speed study that says that the town that the that the um, speed limit is 25, then I would assume the BSP would be able to. I mean, the judge can't oversee that, but I don't know. I'd have to ask her. That's new information to me. I've never heard it. But it's interesting. Yeah, I know. That's interesting. That's how it used to be, anyways. I'll ask. That's good to know, Dave. I've never heard it, so I'll ask her. Yeah, I wonder if they get held in a school, though. Yeah, 
Yeah, that seems crazy, I mean, but I'll ask her. I think the courts wouldn't say that 30 miles an hour as opposed to 25 is yeah. safe for school zone. That's interesting. So I, I'll certainly ask. So thanks for bringing that up. Well, I will say that, you know, in the history of the speeders we do get, I mean, that's they're doing where it is. 60 plus in front of the school, you know, pretty easy to get them there. No, they're doing that on the classy road still. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we'll continue to um, collect uh, information on that and, yeah. you know, budget time is when we'll have to figure out which direction we're going to go with that. Have we, have, we, have we talked about any interest on, I know we, maybe it was Oscar or somebody had someone in mind to do some extra hours? Well, Oscar did. He, he, and he hasn't told you that I said we'll just have is to. Is it worth sitting down with that individual? He hasn't put it out. I told him that we had a patient and sit down with them and he hasn't done that as well. I was going to say, is it worth sitting down with that individual? And if they're interested, yeah, I'm going to ask Oscar as a home. Get him on and have him put it in his main application. Good night. They might do speed enforcement, things like that, but they may not do the animal control and then I can ask them. So then you, at that you point, we either have to find someone to do the animal control or, to, or go with the way of appointing someone in town and do it like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mo's got a lot of time on his hands now, so <laughs> that would be true. <laughs> Which one are we looking at? 
Oh, I'm looking at this one. I'm talking about the petition for use of the public right away for Barry. This is a different one. This is just working in the town of right away. That's a two different applications. I'm sorry. I was like, I'm not seeing that. <laughs> um, so I think, and then even said it currently. Yeah, um, it's a permit fee of $125 um, on the buried and aerial utility lines. And so that was the one I was looking at first. I apologize. And then the set, these are two different permits. Okay. 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 So I don't know if anyone has any questions or concerns about the buried and aerial utility lines. Oh, is this supply room? Table, a piece of fiber, the visual project over the line here. Right, right, which I think mean, it's private property now, and, and obviously if they've been through the PSB, then we can't, you know, it depends on what they've been through. Yeah. They've already been through the public service. Well, they've they got to bring it to build it up for the community action, and you see fiber kind of thing. So yep. they have to know what yeah, depending on where they're doing it would be the states, right? Either the town, that's a state highway. Yeah. 
highway department. Then I would suggest in that case maybe dropping it to just a hundred and twenty-five dollar fee because they're already doing the work. You know, it just was but just I've seen it done this way before, but it, it, it every time's different. So then in which case I say just make it a flat fee. That would be more agreeable to me than refunding money. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because he may have to go out there a few times. Yep. So then we'll just say instead of a deposit of 250, we'll say a fee of. Or <coughs> I'll rework the wording because that way we don't have to update the permit every time we change the fee. But um, I'll just make it $125. And we'll have to take that last paragraph that the deposit will be refunded. Yep, exactly. Okay, do we want to have a motion to approve the permit to work within the town's right away as amended? So move. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. The only change on that list is going from a 250 deposit to a 125 flat fee. So did we have two motions or just yeah. the one? Two. The first was Paul Lindley. The second was no. Mo Hall. Okay. And the first was for the permit application, and the second was for the for the public right of way, buried utility line stuff. For the first one, yeah, and then the second one was for the work in the towns right of way. That's okay. I, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay, discussion regarding accepting postmarks on tax uh, and utility bills. All right, I had to bring this because Dietrich said this is 76 right here. So what happens is the town of Bethel accepts postmarks. And so what happens is if, we'll just use an example, we'll say uh, I pay my taxes I, I, commit, I mail mine and it gets, it gets home through postmark, so it's, we say it's on time. But Chris Jarvis doesn't pay his taxes, he comes in the next day, even though mine is going to show up for three days because I have a postmark, uh, Chris is going to get the interest and a penalty, possibly, depending on what time of year it is, but I'm not going to get anything. So like we always assess, as soon as the, t the taxes are due, the next day you charge interest. So then this time, Dietrich had to reverse 76 interest charges, and this took forever. So what happens when people get upset because they might say, well, somebody mailed their payment and we're charging them, but somebody who's, um, or, you know, we're not charging them because they mailed it, but somebody who comes in the office is getting charged. So basically, um, right, so where I, I had asked about this at a prior select board meeting, or a couple of years ago, and um, they didn't get anywhere. So we also do this because you accept postmarks on taxes, you also accept postmarks on utility bills. Mm -hmm. So we in the office are okay if you want to continue to accept postmarks, because that would probably be hard for Bethel residents to have a change where you didn't accept postmarks because you've done it for so long. But what we would like to see is that you at least waive, give, then give everybody a three the four day grace period because you what you have what we have refunded in interest here is piddly but yet we have paid somebody an hourly wage to do this for you know this could take a, a full day to redo all these so you're kind of penny wise and pound foolish as the old saying goes so there's reviews there that is for what exactly? So taxes were due on September 15th. Yeah. So on September 16th, we charge interest because gotcha. we have to. On well, everything that's not posted. On every no, on everything that has not been accepted as of September 15th. The taxes were due September 15th. So September 16th, we charge interest to everybody because um, that's what we have to do. Because otherwise, um, if you waited four days then everybody who, because that's not the real law right now, it's, it's if we accept postmarks. So if they were, if somebody walks in on the 16th, we charge them 1% interest. 
because they they're coming in. But late. if they walked in, then they wouldn't have had a chance to post mark anyway, right? Right, exactly. <clears throat> so what happens is on so they would get hit with interest. Right. So so what happens is September 16th we charge interest, then we get 76 postmarked envelopes. So then Dietrich spends God knows how many hours reversing all these piddly charges for interest that amount to $211.76. I guarantee you we paid her more to do it than we just reversed the interest. So why do we why do we have to assess the interest all because, on the 16th? Because the because the voters vote that you accept postmarks, but that doesn't mean it doesn't right, that's what, I'm saying. what it doesn't do is it doesn't automatically accept the walk automatically exempt the walk-ins the next day. So so why what what would be so difficult instead of having Dietrich sitting down on the 16th and charging interest, to sit down on the 21st and charge interest? Because right now we can't, we don't have the legal authority to do that because the voters voted at some point in your history that you accept postmarks. They didn't. Understood. So you just, at, at the 21st, the and postmark ones would be in it. Right. So they get come over here. But that. Anything that didn't come in, didn't have a postmark, or didn't arrive by the 15th, then it's interest. And that's what we've been doing. We've been, we charge on the 16th. But that, but that, that that's not what I'm Yeah, but why don't you just charge on the 16th? It becomes, it becomes, it becomes, it becomes, it becomes effective on the 16th if it's, if it's not postmark. Yeah, but why That's what we, okay, hang on, one at a time. So <laughs> what you're saying is, you're saying don't charge interest until the 20th, and then I can't go back, then you, I can't go back and charge. So you're saying on the 20th, charge interest to anybody who hasn't paid. Is that what you're saying? Not exactly. Okay, tell us, say it again, please. Because the people that are postmarked, you're not going to charge any interest. On the 20th, you're still not going to charge any interest. I mean, you give it back. So you, you wouldn't charge it on the 20th. But anyway. I don't know who has... So what's, is there a statute that says that on the 16th, you have to charge everybody interest that's not paid? Yes, that's right. Because you voted on it at town, because you voted on it at town meeting that you accept postmarks. You did also say we 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 accept postmarks and we give a four day grace period. So because of that, the statute is clear. If you like, for example, Bristol, we didn't charge postmarks. So the cops emptied the mailbox at midnight, and if you had to pay every, you got interest penalty. It was clear as mud. But with this, it's a little bit, you know, it was clear because that was it, then that you were shut off. But here, that's what we're saying is, all we want to be able to do on town meeting day is have the voters vote that you still accept postmarks, but you also give a four day grace period on, or something. Because you don't accept, let the voters decide, you don't accept postmarks anymore. And so it's clear, everybody's late is late, or give everybody a four-day grace period, what is basically what you're doing by accepting postmarks. Why can't you, right now, so on the 15th is the deadline. Yeah. So anything that happens on the 16th or later that's not postmarked, mm -hmm. I understand that we have to charge the interest and mm -hmm. penalties and things like that. But what, because, because on the 16th, you're going to have like one or two things. You're either going to have, well, you're going to have three things. You're going to have the people that have already paid. Right. And they've the already people that have that. postmarked it on time that's in the mail that hasn't shown up. Yeah. And then you have all the others, right? Right. That haven't paid yet. So if I'm one of those people that haven't paid yet that's not postmarked and I walk into the town oh. office to pay, then you charge me interest. I do. But why do you have to charge interest to because people that are postmarked that aren't there yet? Because. Why don't you just hold off on those? How, 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 how am I going to know who's mailing there? Yeah, you don't know who's going to be coming mail. in the postmark. Well, I don't know who's going to be mailing. No, but you're going to, I mean, I, I, I can't think. go backwards. I, I have to. It's a one and done. But if so, someone postmarked that thing on the 15th, I mean, I mean we granted, didn't, it could be lost in mail or something. Days. But this, we, we no, but I'm saying is why you have to go through the very next day and assess penalties. Or interest. I understand that the penalties would start accruing on the 16th. Uh -huh. But why do you have to go and actually print them saying, look, you owe us money? You know, why can't you hold off on that for a few days? Like Dave said, like why can't you hold off like a week to do that? 
Because what I'm saying is we don't have the authority, the voters. Because yeah, but if not, well, you're still going to assess them the penalties. But then, what, yeah, but what's going to happen is if... So, it's so, so, it's so basically, it's if you walk in the door, so basically all we want to do is deal with postmarks. Because what we're saying is, because we do what we do, which is charge it the way we're supposed to the next day, um, because then what happens is you come in and pay the next day and we charge your interest. So then basically what happens then is you come in, I charge you 1% interest and you pay the 1% interest that hasn't been charged. So now you have an overpayment on your account. So when we go in four or five days later to charge you interest, there's still adjustments that have to be made because now you have a prepayment. It's part of it is the software. It's a little bit tricky to go in. Either way, we would be doing adjustments. So. But kind of as far as fairness goes, we were looking at it as the aspect of, is it fair that these 76 people got four more days than you did to pay your taxes? No, they didn't. No, they, they didn't. They paid it the same day. Yeah, but they would have been kiting a check for all you know. I'd like to not think that. I'm just but like that person. That be, that be, that be, the postmarks, I mean, I know there's probably people locally that postmark their stuff too, but that's um, really for, you know, you're living in Florida and you yeah, send your name in the mail. Because you get a grace period because you don't know when the postal service is. Right. And this is odd because they <laughs> become COVID more. I just don't know why, why can't we hold off? Like, I know that it's going to start accruing on the 16th, but yep. why can't we hold off on making the adjust, adjustments internally mm -hmm. until we have received. Until we receive it for four days. Or, or something, you know what I mean? Like, then you wouldn't have to do any of that. I got, yes, I, I understand what you're saying, but I still think it's going to create, we'll try. And then anybody, I still think it's going to create. I mean, if you come in the 16th, 17th, 18th, you're going to get charged. I mean, yeah. It's just, well, we have time again before another, one more one. Question. before another morning, so we can try it, but I think what happens is, I think it still moves up in Nemrec because I think it posts your interest as a prepayment and I think we would still have to go back in and make adjustments to some people so I'll have to see Chris. I mean I agree that I think we all agree that that is a waste of time. Two hundred and eleven bucks. I think there's a way in that system too. It's sort of sounding like you're, you're a bit locked in by the software that you're using. It's, like it's either it's all or none it's, it's going to yeah. charge it on the 16th or it's going to charge, charge it on the 20th. Like, right. But then you can run it to you know, I gotta see what's but you could also run into because the voters have already approved the postage. I mean, you could set a date of the 20th that you're gonna lock that in, right? right. But you may have something that comes in the 22nd that was post dated the 14th. Sure. You know? I mean, and if something's they got lost in your mail, or you know, or, yeah, we'll honor it. Yeah, we'll honor it if it shows yeah. up 30 days late like, because it's postmarked. But it just creates. This is just taxes. This isn't water and utility. So it, it's just an ongoing oh. issue. But I'm sorry. It's definitely a waste of time. Amen to that. Numbers. How many? You had 76 that you had to refund. In September, yeah, alone. So, what's the other number that you didn't have to refund? So, what's the total number of well, interest charges? You I guess if you have to take a guesstimate, right? If you had, I don't know how many people were late at the time. I'm just saying. But you want to make a point. 76 you had to refund, and there's only three people charge interest. What the hell? Yeah. Okay, 76 had to refund. You know, 197. He charged really interest. Yeah. Interest. Then. Right. It's a. It's, it's a still a waste of time, but it's still a waste of time because it's two hundred and eleven dollars, and you know we paid her more than that to do it. It, it just becomes tricky because we also, you know, we're also sending out. What about our towns? You you try to. I I. Everybody's a little different. Some towns don't accept postmarks, and then life's easy, frankly, because they don't accept postmarks. Easy game over. And, um, but if you accept postmarks, I do think there's some town that give, they do give, sometimes they give people a grace period. Um, well, in and that everybody knows. You pay your taxes all in the first shot, you had a discount. There are towns that you do that. Used to be that way this time. And, it, and that's true, you know, if you just factor in that, because then everybody pays that for that. So it, it kind of depends. Just but look, if this goes on in the morning, this is probably going to take us an hour and a half. Time. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> this will be the, the last thing well, before lunch. Yeah. You could put that on the morning. Do the voters vote to no longer accept postmarks? 
then it's like they're either going to say yes or no. Either. I mean, I understand the postmark thing because if you are <clears throat> a distance away, like I'm just going to use the example. I just I watched something about this person in Florida that won money on a scratch ticket, and I don't know if anybody heard that, but they they won like a thousand dollars. But because it was over a certain threshold and then COVID hit, you couldn't bring it to the regional office to cash in that thousand dollars. So they had to put it in the mail and then somehow it lost in the mail and then that kind of got there. It was over the time that they had to do it, so they didn't get the thousand dollars.
that was the, really the only thing about on the town manager's report was the railroad. I just wanted you to know how exorbitant the prices mm -hmm. were for that. It's crazy. <clears throat> Dave, your comment was what, under the list of board items? Is that yeah. what you're looking at? Yeah. Can you get there? Does everybody have that sheet? Mm -hmm. Any mm -hmm. questions in regards to the list of board items that we currently have out there? Yeah, well, a speed study on the dirt roads. Yeah, I don't know. This was on the list a while before right. I got here, and I don't know. We've done a few. Well, we have a little flat shoulder to go by my house, 50, 60 miles an hour. Must be downhill. <laughs> okay. I'll talk to Oscar about it. Sometimes that 10,000 pounds down here from the road. Well, I know we had the speed studies because we did a couple um, last year. No. We had four last. I see some guy driving around the other day that had something. What was it, Jude, on the side of his car? Uh, traffic survey? He was up on sure. the because, yeah, the, um, the He was an older guy, and he was the driver saw that he stopped at the mm -hmm. Two Rivers is doing, How did that say? is not doing, they're doing a um, culvert and, you know, okay, that, that stuff cool. for us, yeah. So this was on your list, and I didn't yeah. know where you wanted to do this or why. You, the only reason that, a lot of times you're going to do a speed study is if you think you're going to lower the speed limit, but. We do a couple, I would say, every year. And we did year, Christian Hill, and we did Sand Hill for that one. Yeah, that's one of the Yeah, that's one of the Yeah, I think that that one two years ago, yeah. 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 So, why? Well, one, there was speed limit signs that were missing up there. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And then, some of the speed up there was higher. Well, there was a lot of speed up there. When you press the button on the handicap accessible one, mm -hmm. it goes I wonder if they're it's all air coming out because of, of COVID. I have a feeling they, they somebody turned them off because of COVID. Oh, okay. Oh, so right. I'll double check. And, and, and take a slurp out of the water. COVID. They might have yeah. everything right now is hooked up on temporary lines. They yeah. might have water and water, water up here. Yeah. I see that. Just right.